for many years God would not allow me to travel out of my nation even though I had invitations to preach the gospel in different lands he would not allow me very great places the doors open because of cable television and it came to pass I had a few invitations I went to God I said are you responsible for these doors God says I, I, I'm not aware there's any door the next year I went to him a few invitations I said are you responsible say he's not aware they were they were opening all right so I stopped asking and then I got an invitation from a very poor country so there was no need to ask so even though I didn't ask he said that one I'm sending you there <laughs> Well, I came to the nation, I entered into, I was stamped into the country, where we're holding the crusade was five hours from the capital. Reduce your volume and be sensitive. I'll tell you when to increase it. Five hours from the capital and we traveled, got there in the evening. Then we went to see the church, quite a big church and it was noise abroad those were the days where social media was not was not so strong those were the days of blackberry okay you you have an idea of what i'm talking about so publicity was from mouth to mouth and it was noise abroad that the preacher had come the next day we were coming for the crusade and uh, there were pastors on this side of the road there were pastors on that side of the road and they were they were waving and i was asking the pastor what what's all this say no that they are welcoming you you are welcoming you they love you they love you oh i was excited it was later on i found out why they were waving in that place there is no health care so when a man of god comes into the territory he was god's messenger for health delivery hallelujah so when you start preaching so that you will not be confused so that you will know why you came they will bring a cripple and put the cripple here so that you will not forget that this is we have people like this we have a lot of them like this in our village but you can start with this one hmm. hallelujah I mean the guy was not just crippled his legs were twisted they would have brought someone that is not too crippled they brought someone that the legs were twisted hallelujah so when i saw that they deposited the young man here i devised a way of not visiting that side in my presentation i was going this way and it came to pass that as i was preaching the young man began to shake that. And when he began to shake, I, I wanted to inspect what was going on. You know what was happening? His twisted legs were, they were, they were going back and the bones were cracking. Mind you, I've never seen that before what's happening and the legs kept in slow motion they were going back a mighty hand was at work there so i now got some boldness to visit and the legs became straight and the young man stood up but he could not walk but he stood up the mother was crying somewhere there and i was confused so i know that the right thing to say under these circumstances is walk but walk was here but he couldn't come out so <laughs> i'm trying to i'm trying to be sincere to you okay the pastor that invited me now came and said man of god so while he came and said man of god and touched me at the back 
so the walk that was here now came out of walk walk and then the young lad came. for the first time do you know that the news of this miracle meanwhile for your information when that young man began to walk there were five other crippled people in the congregation that threw their stuff and stood up wait 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 i am not aware of what made them walk so i'm just telling you from my own perspective what made them walk i don't know but five other people started walking and then the people from the congregation now ran towards the pulpit and everyone believed that i was carrying their miracle the security people had to take me from that place you know what if when we left they took my seat the seat i sat on put it join line you will come they'll give you your time you sit on it do you know that the miracles continued even though i was not there wait you are not seeing what i'm uh. so you think i came all the way to tell you about miracles god found an occasion to come you don't even know who you are clapping for you you don't know why you should clap because if it's me you are clapping for you are wrong god found a reason an occasion an opportunity to come out and when he was out nothing could stop me even though the preacher had gone miracles were taking place in the, in fact a woman sat on that seat and she began to prophesy yes. began to prophesy and these things do you know that the crowd that gathered we had finished the conference and we were about to go a crowd gathered a crowd that was more than the crowd we were preaching to because the news of that miracle went out and we were not supposed to preach sunday night but they had to send the pastor's wife go and call the nigerian man the whole place was filled people had heard the story in zambia and they brought sick people in Wilbaro. two and a half days journey on foot never seen the hand of God like that so powerful that when we went for for baptism the people that gave their life to Christ for baptism I entered into the water and prayed and then the water began to heal water for baptism the stream started healing people. began to heal diseases people that were possessed when they were brought into the water demons left them I, I say i saw it myself you know what happened god was let loose my driver was taking me back to the headquarters so that i could fly back and she, he said this is my father-in-law's house and we went there to greet the man the man was there and i told the man Jesus will open your ear and as I was telling him he's here he's here and he stood up he was deaf from the age 9 as at the time I met him he was 64 and his ears could hear as brand new ears when the man began to dance i noticed that his wife wasn't dancing so i went to her and discovered she was crippled and i prayed for her i said jesus says walk and she felt she fell i raised her up i said i didn't say fall down i said jesus say walk she fell again and the third time i raised her 
I noticed she did her hand like this so that she would fall on the chair. So I kicked the chair away and I pushed her. And she staggered and began to walk. I was there for five minutes. The man could hear. The woman could walk. The son came from this door and said in his heart, Hey, this false prophet again. And I heard it as if it was audible. And I went to him and said, You called me a false prophet? He denied. And I released the Holy Ghost on him. And he was on the ground. All of that happened in five minutes. My driver was crying. He was crying till we reached the airport. When we got to the airport, the military people arrested me that I made their citizen to cry. When the man saw that they arrested me, he cried more. And after he ended his tears, he told them what happened. This, the military people needed prayer. When, when he told them that story, they were the ones that escorted me to the plane. I came into that country as a preacher. I left there like a king. Why? God. God found the means, found an opportunity to come down. The only means through which God can enter a matter is when one that he has possessed comes there. The reason why God is mindful of you is because his hopes of dominating the earth are tied to man. So having understood this, if you are here tonight, you come from a Christian home. Can you rise on your feet anywhere you are? Listen to me carefully. You are here tonight. Maybe you come from a Christian home. Your dad's an elder. Your dad might be a pastor, someone in ministry. But since you came to this campus, you have not been a follower of Jesus. You have abandoned the way of your heritage trying to explore life in the ways of the flesh and tonight you are tired and you are saying Jesus I want to mean business with you I want to follow you I want to be your vessel a man that you will possess that will take you to the places where darkness reside so that through my life your light can shine you're saying i'm tired of sin and i want to rebel against the devil so that i can be given an opportunity to be that man you had in mind before you came down to create if that's your prayer if that's your plea if that's your cry put your right hand on your chest anywhere you're standing listen listen to me listen let me explain myself again what you are saying is you want to surrender to him you've been running your life by yourself you will see sin sometimes you choose sin you will see morality you will choose it above god tonight you are saying long i'm tired I, I want to follow you i want to be your vessel if that is your desire and you mean it from your heart the way to indicate is to put your right hand on your chest if your right hand is on your chest leave your seat and come here don't remove this hand from your chest just put it there and come here Those of you in the balcony, do not allow Satan win the argument over your soul. The scepter of the mercy of God is stretched forth. You remember, 
the prophecies that were uttered over your life and when you came to campus that's when you lost your virginity and now you are running on a frequency that you know the only thing ahead of you is destruction you can join us at this point satan will want to bring an argument into your soul you want to make you argue with the conviction of the holy ghost may the devil not win this argument tonight those of you in the front begin to ask him for mercy quickly 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 i'm still waiting for some people up there to join great opportunities that you were given oh when you came to campus you became a, a rolling stone and god is lacking men to possess he's been shut out of the land i'm even seeing that one of you went to pick up some some charms you that came from a place of purity now you have dealings with darkness can you cry to him and ask him for mercy i'm waiting for you those of you that are upstairs i know you have finished your exams but there is another exam that you need to write before jesus Can you cry for mercy don't look around don't look at your neighbor this this contract you are about to enter it's a personal contract and god is willing to blot out that sin is willing to purge it by his blood so that you can have another opportunity remember how you began there are some people in the choir god is speaking to me that you are not supposed to be there you have an opportunity to come do not present a hardened heart i await you those among you that can hear the call the call strives with your soul so that the darkness can be destroyed I await you. I await you. The man on the balcony, struggling, struggling with God. Let the struggling cease. Because today is the day of salvation. Oh, I see someone in the congregation. A strange demonic voice has been speaking to you in recent times. Run and join us here quickly and surrender. Jesus said, if you are ashamed of me in this broken world, I will be ashamed of you in the kingdom of my father. Talk to him. Talk to him. Talk to him. Talk to him. You gave money for abortion recently. Talk to him and ask him for mercy. Ask him for mercy. Ask him for mercy. Lord, look upon your people. Look upon your people with mercy. With mercy. There are vessels before you vessels that you can sanctify vessels that you can purify vessels that you can purge from iniquity so that your spirit will have an advantage i am waiting for you there are seven people i'm waiting for now join them join them join them join them from the main floor and from the balcony confess that scene don't speak in tongues don't speak in tongues no confess it this is what i did i committed abortion 
I kill. I spill blood. Have mercy. That's how to pray this prayer. This is what I did. Have mercy on me. Have mercy. Have mercy. Have mercy. Have mercy. Talk to him by yourself and ask him to have mercy. Mention the sin, mention it before him. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Can you say, Lord Jesus, I approach you tonight. Have mercy on me. I accept that I'm a sinner and that I cannot help myself. Have mercy on me. Blot me, blot my name from the book of death. Blot my name from the book of sin. Blot my sins by your blood. Write my name in the book of life. Every covenant I entered into knowingly or unknowingly tonight I renounce it. Let his power over my soul be broken. Lord, give me the grace to live for you to despise sin to despise the devil all the days of my life in the name of jesus <laughs>